So hello students and welcome back to another video tutorial by Genome Biotech. In this video tutorial, we would be talking about Drosophila melanogaster embryogenesis. Now Drosophila is a common fruit fly which you can find uh, over the over different food material, over different uh, food material. Now, in what manner the Drosophila embryogenesis takes place? You know that this belongs to the Arthropoda, the class Insecta. That is why the body is being characterized into head thorax and then abdomen there are specific regions which are responsible for the formation of different different types of structures in the body okay now in what manner the structural development of drosophila takes place that we will have to understand to understand the process we must look at how the process of fertilization occurs in the case of drosophila melanogaster fly so drosophila melanogaster has been studied extensively as a relatively simple model for cell differentiation in animals during fertilization, a single... So see this. Drosophila melanogaster is commonly referred to as the queen of genetics because it has been extensively studied in the case of genetics as a very simple model organism that we use to study in what manner the process of fertilization takes place, how the different segments of the bodies are being produced. There is a striking similarity between Drosophila and Homo sapiens, humans, because you can find... Drosophila is also bilaterally symmetrical as there is a human being. So you can find that why one side of the body is exactly the replica of the other side of the body. Why one copy of eye is present, one facet of eye is present here, why another facet of eye is present here, why one antenna is present here and another antenna is present here. So you can find there is a one-to-one -one correlation that is being found. How these correlation takes place, in what manner the correlation takes place and how Drosophila melanogaster is being produced, that we must understand from this particular animation. Okay, so looking forward to this. Moving forward. Single sperm cell enters a mature egg, and the haploid sperm and egg nuclei fuse to form a diploid nucleus. Only a few hours after fertilization, the cells of a developing fruit fly embryo become irreversibly determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fly. When you have completed this exercise, you should understand the events of Drosophila embryogenesis and understand how the position of each nucleus determines its fate in the developing fruit fly. Firstly, before moving forward, you must understand that during the process of fertilization, the male pronucleus and the female pronucleus both fuses with each other. When both the male pronucleus and the female pronucleus fuses with each other, then it will lead to the formation of a diploid zygote. This is the diploid zygote which is being produced. When you look at any organism, you must know which are the different body parts of this particular organism. You can look at the different body parts which are present. This body part is commonly referred to as dorsal. This is commonly referred to as dorsal. Okay. The opposite will be referred to as, the beneath will be referred to as ventral. That would be referred to as ventral body part. This is referred to as the anterior body part. The beneath, the last end part would be referred to as the posterior body part. This is said to be posterior body part. Okay, this is anterior, this is posterior, this is dorsal. The below would be referred to as ventral. These parts would be referred to as lateral. Lateral. This would be also referred to as lateral. Okay, so these are the different body parts which are present. Then there are there is another characteristic feature of this class insecta that is it contains three pairs of appendages which are present. These are the three pair appendages which are present, and these three pair appendages refers to the three different legs which are present. You can find the first pair of legs, you can find the second pair of legs, and then there is the third paired appendage which is present. So these are the three different paired appendages which are present in the case of class insecta. And these are the different components. Now see, this is very important if you look at the regions where the different components of the drosophila will be produced. There is an mRNA which is present throughout the cytosol. Throughout the cytosol, there is an mRNA which is present. There is an mRNA which is present throughout the cytosol. 
throughout the cytosol there is an mrna which is present and these mrna which are present throughout the cytosol are the result of maternal effect genes these these will be present throughout the cytosol in the entire cytosol they would be present okay these will be present throughout the entire cytosol of the egg these are referred to as maternal effect genes and the maternal mrna which is present these are the maternal mrna which are present now maternal mrna will lead to the formation of bicoid hunchback nanos caudal genes will determine the anterior and the posterior region of the drosophila melanogaster you would be looking at the animation just try to look at the animation which is being shown to you as you would be looking at the animation that has been shown to you so you can look and visualize that how the animation is going to work now see then the fertilization has taken place it has led to the formation of a zygote next point after the haploid sperm and egg nuclei fuse the resulting diploid zygotic nucleus undergoes a series of 10 rapid cleavages within the central yolky regions of the egg. The embryo is called a syncytium at this point because it is a single cell with multiple nuclei. Now the embryo is commonly referred to as syncytium in this particular stage. As the embryo is referred to as syncytium, syncytium refers to a single nuclei with multiple number of nuclei which are present. A single cell is present. and this single cell the zygote which has been produced it undergoes several rounds of rapid cell division as it undergoes several rounds of rapid cell division so what happens is that it undergoes 10 rapid cell division or cleavages when it undergoes 10 rapid cell division or cleavages then it will form a no a single zygote getting converted into two raised to the power 10 that is 1024 because you know that two cell getting converted into 10 okay then it would be equal to 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 something like that that would be equivalent to 1024 1024 number of cells will be produced okay so that type of division is going to take place and such type of uh, structure which is referred to as produced is referred to as the syncytium So syncytium is a single cell which contains multinucleated cytosol. There are so many number of nucleus which are present, and there is a single cytosol. Then the structure is completely referred to as a syncytium. Moving forward, after eight cleavages, the resulting 256 nuclei begin to migrate to the outer edge of the cell. During this migration, the nuclei undergo two more cleavages, resulting in 1,024 nuclei. So most but not all of these nuclei enter the cortical regions of the egg. Now still this is still referred to as a syncytium because the division of the cells has not taken place. You can look here that majority of the nucleus has moved towards the periphery of the egg and as they are moving towards the periphery of the egg so they are going to form the structure of the cortex. This is the structure of the cortex that has been produced. Okay? Now the nuclei undergo two or more cleavage during that migration which most of the resulting 1024 nuclei enter the cortex of the cell and this is the cortex region of the cell that has been produced moving forward about 90 minutes after fertilization the majority of the nuclei have reached the cortex at this point the nuclei gain the ability to transcribe rna polymerase 2 genes and produce proteins they undergo another th now see the nuclei have gained the ability to control and produce proteins okay now the nuclei will began to develop a cell wall a cell membrane over themselves and they will lead to the formation of a blastocoel cavity blastocoel refers to a hollow ball of hollow ball of cells in which the internal structure is completely hollow and that is referred to as the blastocoel cavity we have seen the cells have moved towards the periphery that region would be referred to as the cortex the central part will be referred to as the medulla region okay moving forward three rounds of cleavage leading to a dense packing of about 6000 column shaped nuclei enclosing the central yolk 
okay there is a central yolk and there are column shaped nuclei which have been produced so there are several different types of column shaped nuclei which are being produced in the case of drosophila melanogaster and there is a centrally present region and the centrally present region is that of yolk so here you will get the yolk is present and there is a peripherally present region where contain large number of nuclei approximately 6000 nuclei 6000 nuclei are there these are the nuclei it is still the syncytium because these are nuclei these have these have not developed the plasma membrane now they would be developing the plasma membrane over themselves see this during a one hour period from two to three hours after fertilization cell membranes form between adjacent nuclei okay by three these hours are the different types of cell membranes which are being formed between the adjacent nuclei as a cell membrane is being formed between the adjacent nuclei, so this will get converted into a wall of cells surrounding the inner yolk. As the cell membrane is being produced, the yolk is being consumed by the cells. As the yolk is being consumed, so there is a hollow cavity which is being produced inside, and that is referred to as the blastocele. Hours after fertilization, the embryo has been transformed into a cellular blastoderm, essentially a hollow ball of cells. Okay, so this is a cellular blastoderm that has been produced, and this is referred to as a hollow ball of cell which is being produced. This is the hollow ball of cell which is referred to as the blastoderm or the blastocele cavity. This is the stage that is referred to as morula blastula, and then after the blastula formation, the next stage that we are going to talk about is going to be the gastrula. So moving forward. When the nuclei reach the edge of the cell, they are totipotent, meaning they have not yet taken on a specific identity and can give rise to any cell type. Just after cellularization, however, the nuclei have been irreversibly determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fruit fly. The location of each nucleus determines its fate. Then the nucleus, uh, the position of the nucleus will be determining its fate. This is very important. Previously, the nucleus which were present, they were highly totipotent. Totipotent means they have the ability to form any type of cells. Later on, these got modified. As these got modified, so they got differentiated. They got differentiated to perform a highly specific functions. As they get differentiated, so they form a particular type of function and thus they were set to be determined. Moving forward. Cell fate is determined in part by localized mRNA in the Drosophila egg. For See this. This is very important. Please try to read this point. The cell fate is determined in part by the localized mRNA in the Drosophila egg. You must understand that there is an mRNA which is already localized within the drosophila egg. If I'm going to fill this mRNA, it would be something like this. This would be the mRNA that is already filled within the drosophila egg. Okay, this would be the mRNA that would be filled within the drosophila egg. This is the mRNA. So there is localized mRNA that is present in the, uh, in the egg. Okay, now this mRNA is going to determine the fate of the egg. How this mRNA is going to determine the fate of the egg, you can look here. Okay, I have made an egg and I have made an mRNA. Now, if the mRNA nucleus will enter towards the posterior side, it will express a protein that would be referred to as bicoid. Okay, else it will express the protein caudal and nanos. Then the differentiation will take place. How? You have to look forward. See. Cell fate is determined in part by localized mRNA present in Drosophila melanogaster. For example, Oscar mRNA is located on the posterior pole. See, you will find that there is a pole which is referred to as the posterior pole. And the posterior pole will have a particular type of mRNA that would be referred to as the Oscar mRNA. Okay, so the Oscar mRNA which will be present towards the posterior pole a part of the egg, the Oscar mRNA encode an RNA binding protein that is responsible for the assembly of the polar granules. It will cause the assembly of the polar granules to take place towards the posterior end. How? Please look here. When the nuclei reach the edge of the cell, they are totipotent, the meaning they have not yet taken on a specific identity and can give rise to any cell type. 
Just after cellularization, however, the nuclei have been irreversibly determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fruit fly. The location of each nucleus determines its fate. Next, it is the location of each nucleus that determines its fate. Next point. Cell fate is determined in part by localized mRNA in the Drosophila egg. For example, the Oscar mRNA is located at the posterior pole of the egg cell. The Oscar mRNA encodes an RNA binding protein that is responsible for the assembly of polar granules. The approximately 30 nuclei that, that migrate in for the formation of the polar granules. Polar granules are being formed by the Oscar mRNA molecule. The Oscar mRNA molecule is the one that is responsible for the formation of the polar granules. Now, how the polar granules are being formed, that we have to understand. See, Oscar mRNA takes these nucleus and will lead to the formation of the polar granules. See this again, look at here. The approximately third nucleus that migrates into the polar plasma bud off from the main body of the embryo along with the polar granules and the resulting pole cell differentiated into the germ cells. Because there is an Oscar mRNA which is present. Oscar mRNA will uptake the nucleus and will give rise to the germ cells. Look here. Into the polar plasm, bud off of the main body of the embryo along with the polar granules and the resulting pole cells differentiate into germ cells. There would be the resulting pole cells that would be present. And these pole cells will be germinating to form the germ line tissue or the germ cells. Okay, next, moving forward. Cell fate is also determined by concentration gradients. Now see, For example, the, the cell fate is going to be determined. In what manner the cell fate is going to be determined? Which part will become the anterior part, which will become the posterior part, which will become the dorsal, which will become the ventral part, is actually being determined by the concentration gradient of the mRNA and the concentration gradient of the proteins that are present in the egg. That means the determination of formation of head and the determination of formation of the posterior part of the body is predetermined within the egg of the female. The egg of the female, it is predetermined that which part will form the head and which part will form the posterior part. How? Dorsal protein is a regulatory protein that is initially distributed throughout the cytoplasm of the unfertilized egg cell. Now see this. This is an egg, an unfertilized egg. So there is a protein that is present and that protein is commonly referred to as dorsal protein. This dorsal protein is present throughout the cytoplasm of the egg cell. So there is no issue. It is present throughout the cytoplasm. Now, oh. next point. However, transport of the dorsal protein into nuclei is controlled by a cell signaling molecule called spotsil. spotsil. Now see, dorsal protein will move into the nuclei which are being produced as a result of fertilization by the action of another protein that is referred to as spousal protein. Now the action of this spousal protein will control how the dorsal protein is going to move into the nucleus. Its expression is different at the nucleus and at the, at the dorsal side and at the ventral side. At the dorsal side, it will not enter into the nucleus. At the ventral side, it will enter into the nucleus. How? Spotsil concentration is highest in the extracellular matrix on the ventral side of the egg cell. See, so this concentration the gradient leads to higher concentrations of dorsal protein in ventral nuclei with lower... This. Dorsal, because of the presence of spatial protein towards the ventral side of the fertilized egg, this spatial protein induces a cell intracellular protein trafficking network that will cause the movement of the protein to take place into the nuclei of the cell present at the ventral surface. So, the dorsal protein will be present within the nuclei of the ventral surface and on the dorsal surface, it will be present outside the nuclei that is in the cytosol. Okay, so now we have the uh, clear-cut differentiation of the dorsal protein, the dorsal protein which is now present in the case of the ventral nuclei, whereas the dorsal protein is present outside the dorsal nuclei. So there would be a clear-cut differentiation of the expression of the genes present within the nucleus. That is why one side will become the dorsal, another one will become the ventral.
Next point. This may seem confusing since dorsal protein is found in ventral nuclei. The name of dorsal protein comes from the fact that the concentration of dorsal remains high at the dorsal side of the egg since none of the dorsal protein has entered the dorsal nuclei. So this is very important. Dorsal protein remains concentration high towards the dorsal side of the egg. And whereas the concentration of dorsal protein in the cytosol falls as it has entered into the nucleus present at the ventral surface. Moving forward. The activation of some genes targeted by the dorsal protein requires peak levels of the dorsal protein, while others can be activated by intermediate and low levels. Other now see this. The differentiation of the level of the dorsal protein present at the ventral nuclei will lead to the activation of certain genes. For example, the first set of genes that will be activated will be referred to as twist-on. The second set of genes that will be activated will be referred to as row-on. The third set of genes that will be activated will be referred to as SOG-on. So first is twist-on, second is row-on. And the third one set of genes that are being activated in the case of Drosophila melanogaster are referred to as the SOGON gene. So first is twist on, second is row on, and the third one is SOG on. So these are the three different types of genes that has been activated. Other proteins can also act on the genes targeted by the dorsal protein, leading to patterns of expression. Now, this will lead to the formation of different organs because certain cells will be expressing the twist on genes. Other will be expressing the row on genes. The third will be expressing the SOG on genes and so on. So different pattern of expression will take place and the anterior part of the body will and the dorsal surface of the body will get separated from the ventral surface of the Drosophila melanogaster. How well do you understand Drosophila embryogenesis? In this section, you will find out. Now, we will have to look at the questions that have been provided from this part of the lecture. So, looking at the questions. Question 1. How many times do the diploid nuclei divide before cellularization? So, the diploid nucleus has to divide many number of times. You know that. The firstly, before that, it has dividing for 8 number. Then it was dividing for 10. And then it was dividing for uh, more than uh, to form 6,000 number of nuclei. Now, you have to form 6,000 number of nuclei. And there is a single nuclei dividing in two. And then so on. So 6,000, we would be requiring 13 round of cell divisions. Correct. Okay. So 13 round of cell division will be required to form 6,000 number of nuclei. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. At the eighth division, see, this is the eighth division where it was forming. Then at the tenth division, there would be 1024 number of nuclei that would be produced. Okay, 1000 getting converted in 2000 to 4000, 5000, and then into the 16, into the 6000. Okay, two will get converted into four, and then there would be six. Next. Question two. Which of the following represents an embryo in which the nuclei have been determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fruit fly? Now, you look at the four embryos. In this, there is no fertilization that has taken place. In this, the fertilization has taken place, but the nuclei have not been differentiated. Nuclei has moved towards the cortex of the cell. In this case, you will see that there are nuclei which are there, which have been divided to form 6,000 number of nuclei. But again, there is uh, no high degree of totipotency. because There is still high degree of totipotency because there is no membrane which is produced. Now, what the question speaks to us is that which of the following represent an embryo in which the nucleus have been determined. Now, in which case the nucleus has been determined? The nucleus has been determined because of the formation of the cell membrane okay there is a question very yes it's absolutely d you are absolutely correct correct okay next question three what would happen if the oscar mrna molecules were deposited at the anterior pole of the egg cell rather than the posterior pole if the uh, oscar mrna are going to be present at the anterior pole Rather than at the posterior pole, then the gametic cells will be produced over the head. 
and not towards the posterior part of the body. Okay. The cells at the posterior end of the body will eventually develop into germ cells. No, the cells at the anterior end of the uh, of the cell would eventually differentiate into germ cells. Yes. The cells at both the posterior and anterior will eventually differentiate into germ cell. No, the embryo would develop into an adult fruit fly without germ cell. No, because the Oscar mRNA determine where are the gametic cells or germ cells produced. So being present at the anterior cell will eventually distribute differentiate into the germ cells. So the anterior part will uh, will produce the uh, germ cells. Again, Mike, you are absolutely correct with this. Correct. See the development, the different division is taking place. Once the division is taking place, then they will go here. The Oscar mRNA also has the protein that will bind to these cells and will lead to the formation of the germ, germline cells or the gametic cells. So the gametic cells are produced at the head region of the Drosophila. Question four. You have determined that a particular nucleus on the ventral side of the embryo gives rise to a leg in the adult fruit fly. Okay. What would happen if this nucleus was moved to the dorsal side of the embryo before cellularization? Now, before cellularization, if it is going to move, then nothing is going to happen. There would be no effect that would be produced because still each and every cell is totipotent. So another cell can take its function. But after cellularization, if this would have been deleted or omitted, then that part of the body will not be produced. The nucleus would give rise to a leg, but in the wrong location, no. Uh, the nucleus would become pro programmed similar to the nucleus in its new location. Yes, it can become programmed similar to the type of the nucleus which are present in its new location. The nucleus would give rise to a leg in the normal function. No, the nucleus would give rise to a leg and the structure produced by the nucleus around. The nucleus would give rise to both a leg. No, the nucleus will become programmed similar to the nucleus in its new location. Okay. Correct. Okay, it has become programmed and it will form uh, another part of the body because it was not it was not differentiated, it was still totipotent. That is why it has formed another part of the body. Moving forward. Question five. Which of the following might happen if the cell containing the nucleus from question four was moved to the dorsal side of the embryo after cellularization? Now, after cellularization, see this. After the cellularization has taken place, now if the cell is going to be moved, then the nucleus would give rise to leg at another location in the body, okay? Would give rise to leg in the normal location? No. The nucleus would give rise to both a leg in the structure produced by the nucleus surrounding it. The nucleus would, uh, would give rise to a leg, but in the wrong location on the fruit fly. Correct. Okay. See this? It will have a leg present over its thorax. So it has given rise to a leg at the wrong location over the fruit fly because the nucleus has been moved from here to here. This is very important. This is what I'm trying to speak to you all that it is the embryogenesis as well as the protein gradients that are responsible for the formation of different components of the drosophila and of the human body. If during embryogenesis, some of the cells would have been omitted, then what will happen? that organ could be effectively omitted from the organism body. So this is very, very important. Moving forward. Question six. The twist gene is only activated by peak levels of the dorsal protein in the nucleus. Okay. What would happen if the concentration of spotzel was uniformly high around the entire embryo? What will happen if the concentration of dorsal is uniformly high? If the concentration of dorsal is uniformly high, then both the structures will, the above part, uh, above part will also develop dorsal and this part will also develop dorsal, okay? The twist gene would only be activated in cells on the dorsal side of the embryo. The twist gene would only be activated, the twist gene would be activated in all cells of the body because it is completely, uh, uh, spousal concentration is same in the entire body. So it will be activated in all the cells of the body, okay? So we have another answer. Who is this guy who is answering? Okay, good. So, will be activated in all the cells. Correct. Moving forward. After fertilization, the haploid sperm and egg nuclei fuse to form a diploid zygotic nucleus. This nucleus undergoes a series of 10 rapid cleavages, 
during which most of the nuclei migrate to the periphery of the cell. The nuclei then undergo another three rounds of cleavage, leading to about six thousand densely packed, column-shaped nuclei enclosing the central yolk. Cell membranes then form around the nuclei, transforming the egg into a cellular blastoderm. Okay, it will lead to the formation of a cellular blastoderm that would be produced. So there is a cellular blastoderm that has been produced. Now moving forward. When the nuclei reach the edge of the cell, they are totipotent. Just after cellularization, however, the fates of the nuclei have been irreversibly determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fruit fly. This determination is accomplished through localized mRNA and concentration gradients in the Drosophila egg. And the concentration gradient is that of sparsal and dorsal protein. You have completed this exercise. With this, we have completed the first lecture of the series Drosophila embryogenesis. I have cleared the first mechanism of regulation of the dorsal and the ventral side for the formation of Drosophila melanogaster. Now, in my next lecture, I will be talking about the anterior and posterior polarity of the Drosophila melanogaster through bicoid hunchback nanos and caudal gene. Okay, so we would be meeting tomorrow at the same time, leading to the discussion of the anterior and posterior polarity of the Drosophila melanogaster. I do request all the classroom program to students to please read this particular uh, section from your Pathfinder so that we can have a valid discussion about the things. Okay, that's all for today. Good night. Bye-bye.